This episode is presented by Verizon. America's most reliable network is going ultra. From the company that distributes HBO Max content in theaters and one of the minds behind Jupiter Ascending. No bees are genetically designed to recognize royalty. Comes an installment so long in the making. This is what technology looked like when the last one came out. Freeman, 713. I am a sentinel. The Matrix Resurrections. Prepare for a film that asks the ultimate question. Do you take the blue pill and let them reboot this without the creators starring Tom Holland as Neo? Or take the red pill and see how far up its own ass the story can go? This cannot be another reboot, retread, regurgitate. Why not? I will seek will franchise pin off! At last. Wasn't too sure about the callback, but you know, it's just hard to resist. As Matrix 4 attempts the rare reverse double mind f a movie about being forced to make a follow-up to a trilogy you're currently watching the forced follow-up to, which just ends up being reality? Our beloved parent company, Warner Brothers, has decided to make a sequel to the trilogy. They inform me they're gonna do it with or without us. It's like the invented bullet time, but for dodging criticism. Whoa. You forgot how the Matrix ended. No, the other ones. Look, look! Just look at that. Pick up 60 years after Neo became Computer Jesus and brought an end to the war between robot squids and cave ravers. And while in Matrix coffees have become extremely tiny, not much has changed for the billions still stuck inside. The Matrix is the same or worse. But Neo won't return to shut it down for good or awaken the millions who still want to be free. No, instead, watch the Chosen One risk it all to yeet his girlfriend. If there is a chance, I can free her. Even if it means endangering everyone in this city. Because we're finally getting the answer to what the franchise was really about. Taking unlabeled pills, then risking it all to impress a girl you met online. I just thought um, you were a guy. <sighs> Why do all my trinities look like Harry Knowles? Keanu Reeves and his struggle beard return as Thomas Anderson, a game designer who probably should have taken over Cyberpunk 2077, until he's reborn again as Neo, again. A living legend who's treated with the reverence of a modern day Keanu Reeves. Not a fanboy out here, but this is kind of a huge moment for me. Joining him is Trinity, who's back to kicking ass and taking names two hours into the runtime. My name is Trinity. There she is, Newcomer Bugs, the latest example of Warner Brothers space jamming their IPs into everything. My name is Bugs, as in Bunny. What's up, Doc? A simulated version of Morpheus, because the real one canonically died in the bad 2005 video game. Can't bring back the best part of the films if he died in a video game tie-in. That'd just be crazy. Niobe, the character from the good Matrix video game tie-in. And I guess the sequels. Agent Smith, who's been upgraded into a hot musical theater actor, but who brings as much menace to the role as he did to King George in Hamilton. Awesome. Wow. Some RoboScab class traders who all look like these thingies. And Neil Patrick Harris as the analyst. A clear metaphor for the fact that men do not need therapy. In fact, I am I'm the chosen one, and that married woman I'm obsessed with does love me. She just doesn't know it yet, okay? I did my own research. You loved the first Matrix for its original mix of William Gibson's Neuromancer with a Gap Khakis commercial. Now, all that meticulous craft will be sidelined for the same quick cut garbage fighting that's numbed us out for the last decade. Augmented by effects that are supposed to look fake and bad, I guess? And where Neo still knows Kung Fu, but at this age, he'd just rather spam the block button. Come on, you have John Wick in your movie, and that's the director of John Wick. Would it kill you to wick it up a bit? Wicky wicky kicky kicky. So gather the adult children you've had time to raise since The Matrix came out and revisit a film stuffed with about a hundred references to a timeless classic. Free your mind. Mr. Anderson! No. Time is always against us, etc. And two or three references from the sequels. In this self-aware shrug of defiance towards franchise filmmaking that got trounced at the box office because two rival studios released six different Spider-Men starring three different actors, then reunited them on screen before the M-Fortrix could even come out. 
Sorry, Neo, you're too late. We've all been spider-pilled. Starring. It's about ethics and gaming symbolism. Deus Ex Mac on her. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm not Lawrence Fishburne, but give me a chance. The Defenders, Antivirus, Dark Clippy, You Know Weaving. Whoa, is that Christina Ricci? For one scene? Jada Packet Sniff. And when you finally buy a bidet. I gotta hack in the bathroom, hurry. Yes. The Great Trin Robbery. Pretty cool that the two big villains are both musical theater icons. When are we getting The Matrix on Broadway? Kristen Chenoweth is the Oracle, that guy who played Shrek as the Architect? Oh, and Ben Platt is the Spoon Kid. He's the perfect age. This episode is presented by Verizon. America's most reliable network is going ultra. We don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. Save the cheerleader. Save the world. Kids, this is the story of how I met your mother. Thank you for being a friend.